Kittele uh, lecture also, because it's not only part of the normal course of European population issues, it's also a first time lecture, Kittele lecture of the Association of uh, Flemish Demographers. Uh, and we are particularly happy to have Bart van der Putten from the University of Ghent amongst us. He is uh, one of the <coughs> fine demographers in Flanders for the moment, uh, working on the issue of divorce and I suppose also marriage and I suppose also all kinds of relationships. Uh, so he will give a first lecture from the Malthusian era to the to most divorced society. I'm very curious to uh, learn what Bart will have as a lecture today, but I am sure it will be a very interesting lecture. So uh, nice to be here in Brussels. Um, I guess these are the students. These are professional secretaries. I'm the senior. <laughs> so segregation is very important. Um, I just want to start with a, with a question. Um, I guess I'm pretty sure you're all on the marriage market or the cohabitation market, or that's a process you're into. Uh, who wants to find a partner or has a partner? Um, partner you really love. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, wants? I want to see. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Does, does your wife know? <laughs> no, okay. Um, interestingly, um, so we're, we're here. Let's have you on marriage. There is a love norm. Yeah? That's how we see marriage. Some years ago, in, actually, I think in, in uh, this course, European Population Issues, we had um, Stephanie Kuntz, I think she, she was... Yeah, she has been in Brussels, yes. And she says, she, she comes here uh, from the United States and says, it's a radical idea, marrying for love. Wow. This is so much against our intuition. We think love is important, has always been important, will always be important. Marrying for love is a crazy idea, she says. More or less like that. So the first article uh, that I uh, put on, on the list for you to read, or to read in the future, I guess. <laughs> um, it's about this. It's a radical idea. So let, let's have a look at um, other views on marriage that Make, us, uh, make it understandable that it's a crazy idea. Okay, it's not quite scientific this example, but it was very illuminating for me. Um, this is a part of Brazil. You know, there will be World Cup and there will be a party, but we also have landless people. Uh, in Portuguese, you call them uh, Sentera. There is a movement of landless people. And they often live in camps like these, in tents. Um, for some reason, I was in such a little village, there was a, a guy with some children there, um, and he told me the story that his wife went to the city, just disappeared. And after some time, he realized she's not coming back, she's in the city, she, she has left me. Not really a divorce, but they were not really married as well. They, they just, she just left. and then. A week later, he found a new wife. He, he, um, he met somebody or he knew somebody in the camp. And he said, okay, we get along together very well. Why don't you come and live in my house or in my tent? <laughs> <laughs> so they did. And they treat each other as spouses. No, no big thing. Just it's convenient. You, you have children. You have... Uh, some work to do, I think, or you need a wife, I guess, or a wife needs a husband, or something like that. <laughs> okay, why don't you just unite our forces? Interesting. Um, another example, another view of marriage. Uh, the Catholic Church, uh, the, the, the Council of Trent, 16th century, the duties of married people, again, and blah, 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 let wives 
must never forget that next to God they are to love their husbands. They have to be reminded. <laughs> you have to love your husbands. Don't forget. Uh, of course, they have to be obedient as well. That you have to recommend them. <laughs> have to remind them as well. Yeah. Um, and historians would say um, what the view of the church was is uh, that love is a duty of spouses. You marry, love will follow. And it's a duty in your marital life, but it's not the basis of marriage. You don't marry for love. Love will grow, something like that. If, if, uh, if you go to, to a, a, a club, somebody of another part of the world comes to you, you, you dance a little bit, and if the guy says, okay, let's marry, and you say, honey, I want to be in love first, the guy will perhaps say, love will grow, something like that. It's a duty. In marriage, it's not necessarily the basis of partner selection. Okay, another example. Um, Turkish marriage, um, some decades ago, was a very interesting research by Ron Lesla, I guess you know him, um, and some colleagues. I don't remember the exact average time between meeting and mating, but you can calculate it in days. <coughs> like 20 days or something. The average day between meeting and mating Belgian Turks going to Turkey was say 23 days. So you meet, you meet them, okay, and you marry. Sometimes it's, it's rather quick, I would say. This is not what we typically think is a good uh, process. Um, we know there are arranged marriages that we are so selfish, Western people, choosing a partner uh, because of your own. Feelings is very selfish. It's a family thing. And the family arranges the marriage to some extent. Um, I think very illuminating we have constant when you're marriages, you marry a relative. Um, it's a worldwide practice. You can't read it, but it goes to up to 50% and more in some countries. This is far away from what we think is marriage or is practice. Like you don't marry your nephew, but it's rather common. It was common, well, it happened here as well, some years, centuries ago. It was not very common, but it happened here as well. So, strange from our modern Western view. Okay. Um, interesting, the British Pakistani study by, by Shah, um, she makes a distinction between two types of marriage. <coughs> Arranged marriages, where bride and groom have no significant influence, Perhaps you can refuse a partner, a potential partner, but then the next the pressure is high to, to accept it. You have arranged love marriage where the couple meets each other and proposes their families, let's arrange our marriage, something like that. Then you have the Western love marriage, which is an expression of fundamental liberty, etc. etc. Et but that's typically not in the parental plans. Um, so have a tip for uh, Christmas. You, you, you have Christmas holiday, you have lots of time, no exams in January. <laughs> it's old fashioned. Um, a font kiss is on the British Pakistani on this problem. You meet a Pakistani boy meets a British girl, it's a very nice movie, but then the family is not very happy with it. These are extreme stories. This is fiction, but it shows you the cleavage between the Western and some non-Western practices on marriage. Um, a bit more abstract, you have to see this, I think, in a, in a family systems uh, perspective. If you have these family systems, which are patriarchal, patriarchal etc., marriage is a family business. We are here, nuclear families, husband, wife, children. Marriage is a copy business. That's our family system. This is a system of many other uh, populations and worlds. Very illuminating, I think, is conflict in these two broad types of family systems because it shows you what is important. Um, clan fights, internal, external. I'll give you an example. It's in Dutch for the ones who can't read it. That's not very important, I'll tell you. 
you often hear in the news you have fights between Turkish families or clans and they go and shoot each other, something like that. Because there is a family discussion, and there, is a, there is a rivalry for some strange reasons. You, that you, you come in the newspaper for that, it's not that every family shoots at other families. I mean, this, this is very extreme, it's an extreme example that shows the conflicts are um, conf are conflict between clans or clan control. We have movies about it. Christmas holiday on the Turkish community in um, Belgium or in Germany, Gigi one to Prize, I think very insightful. These are again this is fiction, it's a bit these are sharp examples that show you the cleavage between the Western and the non-Western people on marriage. Okay. But we have our own extreme cases. We have, I don't know, every month, family dramas, we call them. Mm -hmm. Adultery, typically adultery. Something like that. And then wife, uh, man, husband, shoots wife and children. And commits suicide. Not everybody does that, of course. These are extreme examples, but these are our Western conflicts. It's in the couple relationship. It's not the big family thing. It's the couple relationship. I think this is this shows you very. These are extreme examples of something very different, very different from the systems. Okay, so Stephanie Kuntz came here. The radical vision of the radical idea of marrying for love. Yes, there, there are some points in her. She has arguments. She has observations that the, the Western love norm is not something universal or something that was always important. What we might add, um, we also have to ask you the question: What's your view on gender equality for the husbands or the, the, the boys here? Are you prepared to iron? It's a question. Are you prepared to iron? Yes, of course. The marriage market watches your behavior. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's one day my, my son, when he was four years old, I was ironing once. <laughs> he asked me, "Is it allowed to play with mama's toys?" He said, "Okay, okay, I stop it. I stop it. <coughs> I'm not in this situation. Yeah, right? I'm not in this situation. I'm an old school man. <laughs> the boys here." To do the ironing <laughs> or work hard and uh, have somebody to iron for you and not your wife. <laughs> okay, so um, two massive changes the love thing and gender equality. Um, now it's different than it used to be. So let's have a look at and why the hell is this not. Let's have a look at the episodes then until now, and perhaps a little bit on the future. Okay. So, where does it come from, this love thing? Okay. So that was uh, the introduction. Why do I want to talk about this topic? I did some research on it, that's one thing. Uh, although, Patrick and I do more uh, migration related stuff, mm -hmm. the, the recent uh, things, but I think it's a very important issue to, um, to discuss with sociology students or social science students why I teach sociology as well. So I know sociology students uh, don't take it personally, it's, I have my students in mind. I'm struck <laughs> by the fact that they live in the here and the now. And for sociology students this is crazy, this is completely crazy. Um, when I tell them perhaps marrying for love was a a recent invention. They are looking at me and hey, what's he talking about? Well, maybe you, you are looking at the same way now, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think it's so very important if you want to, to, to understand the contemporary situation or the future perhaps, that's very difficult of course, you have to know where it comes from. You have to see variety. Okay. And the second point is that um, I think this is a hardcore social demography subject, although it's about etc. Um, 
we will address this from a rather quantitative approach. Um, and I'm not against qualitative research, not at all. But um, I think demographic facts like marriage, divorce, migration, uh, fertility, mortality, these are the crucial issues in your life. You don't want to die, typically. Children or not, the question will come. <laughs> That's very important. My, no? It's very crucial issues. Uh, migrating or not, being a stranger coming here, these are the crucial events in life and people use all their values, their resources, etc. to influence them. Or not influence them, to, to do something like that. So society shows itself in demography. I am not a demographer who knows by heart the fertility rate of every country past that. I'm interested in that, it's important, but that's not that interesting, let's be honest. We want to use demography to study society. That's my point. Okay, but that was why you want to do this. Let's uh, check this episode by episode. You know Maltus? Yes. Very briefly, you have population, you have an economy, and it's not always working out well, too many people, not enough uh, wheat, something like that, okay, you have to do something with it. Um, we have, in the pre-industrial society, okay, we have a positive check, people die if there's not enough food, but we also have a preventive check. We use our marriage system and we use fertility to regulate the relation between the economy and population. Very <coughs> simple. Um, so, based on this Malthusian perspective, um, scholars have thought, let's have a look at, this, uh, at our marriage system, we can call it a West European marriage pattern, which is Malthusian, which uses the preventive uh, strategies to 